Hello and welcome to Brandex Reviews. Today I'm going to be doing another review because I've just done one earlier today of the Dark Knight Rises soundtrack that's been recently re-released and I have another record soundtrack re-release here and that is The Running Man by Harold Faltermeyer. Obviously this was the soundtrack to the 1987 movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Very good film. If you like the film, I did actually do a um, review of the Amiga 500 game on this channel years ago. So if you want to check that out, just maybe look up Running Man Amiga review, Brand X reviews, you'll probably find it. So, um, but this is the soundtrack on record. Now, I do own the soundtrack for this on a CD. Um, and I think that's become quite a collector's item over the years as well. Last time I looked them up, it's actually worth quite a bit of money. I can remember the first time I ever became aware of the concept of soundtrack albums back when I was about, I don't know, 11 or something, maybe younger. And I was a big fan of movies and I'd seen The Running Man at the time. It was one of my favourite films, to be honest, as a kid. Um, so to see a soundtrack of this on, I think it was like cassette or CD at the time, I seem to remember seeing it in HMV or Virgin or somewhere. It was kind of a new concept to me that you could actually listen to a soundtrack and that these were commercially available. So it's kind of cool getting this on record. Now this isn't just the, the same tracks that were available with the previously issued one. This has been expanded. Now I haven't opened this yet, but I have actually heard a streaming version of this because uh, the expanded version of this got put out there, I suppose, on the internet um, some time ago. So I did manage to actually listen to all this. And it is very good. I mean, if you've seen the film, you kind of get the idea of what the score is anyway. But uh, yeah, pretty decent. So um, I'm going to open this thing in a moment. Obviously, this thing uh, is shrink wrapped at the moment, so I haven't opened it. So you'll be kind of seeing a lot of the stuff that I'll be seeing for the first time as I do this. Now, um, it is a, a double, it's a gatefold. Uh, so basically, um, when all this shrink wrap comes off, I'm going to need one of these to keep it protected. I've got a load of these as a record collector, you're going to have to have a load of those. Um, I don't know in terms of how this thing's going to go in value. Just a bit of information before I open this. I bought this off Amazon. Get it right because I made a bit of a mistake with the last video I did where I bought it. Um, I got this off Amazon yesterday, Friday the 14th of August 2020. I believe that was the release date in general for this. I initially bought it technically pre-ordered it because I ordered it the Thursday so that was before it was actually available so I pre-ordered it and it should have been $36.99 from memory and it came the next day which was the day of release uh, using Amazon Prime and when obviously that's, that's how much I paid for it but then this morning so Saturday the 15th I got an email from Amazon relating to their pre-order price guarantee because they've dropped the price now to about £30.99 I think so they've actually refunded me about uh, £6 something like that uh, 6 or £7 I can't remember the exact how much I paid originally but it was about 36 37 that I paid and it's come down to £30.99 or something so um, already it's kind of dropped in price on there. I had looked on eBay because I was a bit loath to use Amazon as I've said on previous videos given everything that's been going on. A lot of the businesses have been having to um, to shut down and so on um, and Amazon's been kind of raking the money in so I don't really like doing business with them where I don't have to but unfortunately yeah, they were a lot cheaper than anywhere else that was going. So and I wanted it next day as well, this one specifically, so it's partly so I could do this video. So um, if you are wanting this, I don't know if the value of this will go up in over time, um, like, any, like anything else, it could go either way. So with that anyway, let's get the thing open. I've just been showing you the track listings there as well. Uh, you can obviously look these up online, let me just stay over it for a moment. So you can see there what's what. It does actually tell us here as well which tracks were originally released on the Verisa Sarabande soundtrack. So that was the CD that I used to own actually. So anything marked with one star, obviously that's what was on the original version of the soundtrack. And you see it's got two stars, it's indicating that it is the film version. So if I can just get that back in focus again. If you want to pause it and just 
obviously bearing in mind those two asterisks that uh, have been indicated there, you can kind of get the specific information on those by looking at these. So, side A, B, C, and D. Right, let's pause and let's get this thing open. Right, so I've got this thing open now. Obviously, you can see there's a lot less uh, reflection on there. I kept the hype sticker. I usually just cut these things off. So let's just have a quick read of that. So, deluxe edition of Harold Faltermeyer's 1987 masterpiece, a tour de force of the synthesizer-based score from the composer of Beverly Hills Cop and Top Gun. So it's expanded from the original 17 to 35 tracks, mastered from new sources, new notes, and additional photos, brand new art design. So yeah, quite interesting there. So um, obviously we've been looking at this thing for the last six minutes now. So that's the spine on the thing. I do like the fact that they've used the same kind of like font as well that uh, they use in, in the titles of the films as well. So they've obviously put a bit of effort in there. They know that this film's kind of cult, but it does have its fan base. That is pretty awesome. Like I said, it's the first time I've opened this. So hang on, sorry, I nearly dropped my phone. Right, let's get it, get it right. Focus, please, thank you very much. Jesus Christ, there we go. That is pretty cool. So, uh, I do like stuff like that. So I'm just going to go into here. I'm just going to pause it so I can get this out. So this is the first record, obviously. It's got the, uh, the poster in black and white on here. Um, my focus is gone. It's all over the place. So, some information there. Let's have a quick look. You'll probably be able to pause this if you wanted to, to actually read it, but uh, it's talking here obviously about the way that the, the score to the, to the movie was done, how Harold Faltermeyer put it all together, as you, as you can imagine. And then it turns over, so that's, that's the first part of it. That's pretty cool. Some more information there. Don't know if you want to read that, but whatever. Buy it if you want to read it. Uh, so that's the first record. Let's have a look at the thing itself. Can't remember if this was some kind of coloured thing. Uh, if I can pause it, it's got a label as well. So it's on black vinyl uh, as normal. The label is pretty much the same on both sides. There's no point showing both sides, but there you go. Um, as far as the inner sleeve goes, it is made from a kind of card material, but I didn't see any paper flakes or anything uh, coming off this. I don't know, scuffs as I took it out, so I don't feel the need to replace the uh, the inner sleeve. Obviously, I wouldn't replace it to the point where I got rid of that, but sometimes you kind of have to if they're really bad. Um, but uh, no, absolutely fine. Let's have a look at the uh, the second uh, sleeve. So it kind of continues what was going on with uh, the first one, and there's more writing on here as well, so you can kind of read the information on there. That's of any use. And then carries on down here. Another picture. And then the next bit, you've got some more information on the tracks as you did have on the back of the outer sleeve. And there you go. Obviously, yeah, there's another record in there, so it's two records, and uh, this, the labels are all the same on each one, so there's no point getting the record out for this one. So, uh, incidentally, if you are interested in Harold Faltermeyer, who did the score for this, I did pick up this rather interesting record. Um, last year. Uh, it wasn't terribly expensive either, I think I got it off Discogs. Harold Faltermeyer I brought an album out, I think it was back in 87, and he does like vocals and stuff on it as well, rather than just doing sort of instrumental orchestral um, synthesised kind of stuff. And it doesn't tie in, as far as I can tell, with any movie scores that he's done, with the exception of one really good track called Bad Guys and um, it's basically one where it was the it was a song from the um, Beverly Hills Cop 2 soundtrack basically and well it was the, it was the so it was a score from the Beverly Hills Cop 2 soundtrack and he turned it into a song and all these songs were actually done, obviously vocals done by um, various, well there were a couple of different guys that did the actual vocals to them. Uh, Harold Faltermeyer isn't a singer, uh, I don't think he did any vocals on, on them anyway, but uh, those were songs done by Keith Fawzi and a guy called Scott Wilk. And uh, pretty good record anyway, it's just kind of a side issue. If you're a fan of Harold Faltermeyer, I thought I'd throw that, because I'd never heard of this till like, a couple of years ago to be honest. 
uh, especially that Bad Guys uh, song from, it's not even from Beverly Hills Cop 2, it doesn't appear anywhere in the movie or on the, even on the soundtrack for, for that film, but obviously he uses score from that film, so quite interesting. Now, um, I know what some people are going to be asking, um, does this include the, I think, I think there was a song by a guy called John Parr, and it was called Running Away With You, and it was the end credits song from the film. And I've not, I know a couple of people that really dig that song, but it's not included on here. This is just the, um, the actual score itself. So if you wanted that, you're going to be a bit disappointed. So uh, I haven't played this yet. I'm imagining that it'll be it'll play very well, so I wouldn't really, uh, really comment on that. There's not much to say with records other than you either like them or you don't, kind of thing. But. Uh, Really glad that I got this. Like I say, this was one of my favourite films as a kid, and I think, like from memory, it was one of the first soundtracks that I ever saw when I became aware that you could actually buy soundtracks. So, uh, pretty cool. Anyway, I'll leave it there. I kind of rambled for quite a bit, but hopefully you found this interesting. Um, as I say, price-wise, I don't know if this is going to improve. It, as in like get better, cheaper, or if it's just going like, to go up in value to the point where it's really expensive to buy. Uh, but I snapped this up because I didn't want to take a chance. It's just a bit of a bad feeling that if we buy this now, it's going to be one of those things where it'll cost like £100 or something like that. So, uh, right, I'll leave there. Like I said, I've done a couple of other recent reviews of soundtracks on record that have been recently released or recently re-released. I did Casino Royale last week and The Dark Knight Rises re-release earlier today so if this kind of thing interests you let me know uh, i might do more of them in the future but for now i'm just gonna leave there and say thank you very much for watching